So today we're going to look at how we can reuse a level sequence animation on different on different actors without having to recreate a different level sequence player for each one. So to begin with, what I've done is I've created a door, which is just a an actor with a static mesh of a door, and a button to trigger the opening of the door, which is just a cylinder with a box collision to be triggered when the player enters. I've then gone and created a level sequence. So if you go click there, click level sequence, and then you can name it and save it where you want to. So I've called mine LS Open Door. And it, the window will open here in Sequencer. So the first thing we're going to do is just animate the opening of the door. So if you click on the actor, click on Add, Actor to Sequence, we will add the door. And then we will just animate its transform. Then on the door, click on the plus, go to Transform. We want to have it closed to begin with, so we'll click the first key. And over, say, one second, we will rotate it on the yaw, say, about 100, 110 degrees. So it will open that way. Now we just play the animation. There's the opening of our door. So we can save that and close it. Now to trigger that animation, we will go back to our button. And this is the box collision. Go to on component begin overlap. We'll just check that this is equal to our player pawn. And we only want to open the door once, so we'll just do a do once. And then we will create the level sequence. Create level sequence player. Put in our level sequence, the open door. And then we will tell it to play. So if we now play, we enter, and the door opens. It snaps back, which might not be what we want, but we'll deal with that in a moment. Now the problem is, what if I duplicate the door and the button, so I click on that and this, press Alt and duplicate. Let's just duplicate this way. Duplicate the floor, just delete that. If I now play, and if I go onto this box, which door will open? If I go there, again, it's the, the first door that opens but we actually want the second door to open. So how do we do that? Well, we could just create another level sequence player to open this door. But then if we had a third door, we'd have to create another level sequence player, which obviously is not ideal. So there is another way of doing this using blueprints. And that's the way that we'll explore next. So the first thing we want is for our buttons to know which doors they are meant to open. So on the button, I've just created a variable called door to open and set it to be an actor reference and instance editable. So here we can click on our first button and we can say that is to open door one. You can click on our second button and tell it to open door two. So now the two are linked, but even but that's obviously not going to change which door they open. 
So if we look at the level sequence player to understand what, what things we need to change in order for that to happen, what we notice is if we go to the door, there is a, a binding property here. And this sequence has a binding to BB door one, which is why whenever it is triggered, it will always open the first door. If we changed it to BP door two, it would open the second door, but there will be issues. So this is something that we need to change in the blueprint, depending on which button we step on. So how do we go about doing that? So let's go back to the button. Let's just close this, go back to the button. As we can see, we've created the level sequence player here. But now we need to somehow change the binding in the level sequence player. But this, this is not quite as straightforward as you think. So there is a sequence binding that you can search for. Get sequence binding on the player. It just needs the sequence you want to change the binding on. So that's our sequence. And the unresolved binding on that sequence is the BP door. Now we can add, say, add, tell it to add binding on the actor. On the actor, we can say add binding. This is the binding. And the actor we want to change it to is our reference to which door. So we can get the door. That's the binding. And now you'd think this might work. But let's see what happens. See, so if I go into the first one, it opens fine. If I play again and go on to the second button, it opens, but it snaps back to the original position. I'll just do that again. So it snaps to where the first door is, if you look, and it opens there, then snaps back. So two things we want to change. One, we don't want it to, we want it to remain open. So we can go to here. We can, on the settings, we can say, make, and on completion, just keep state. So again, it opens, but it remains there. If you go on the first button, it's in the right location. So obviously the issue is where this but this door is. Its location is the issue. And again, if we go back to the level sequence player and open that, well, we can see certain things on the level sequence player that might help us to the level sequence and we scroll down, we see that there is a box here for overwrite instance data. When we click on that, it now gives us access to a transform origin, which is at 000, and a transform actor. Now this level sequ this actor is set at 000, and this is actually important. So if you're following this tutorial, and things don't seem to be working out correctly, make sure that the original actor that has been used in this sequence is has its origin at 000, or things will, will go awry because of the origin will need to be shifted. But we go back here, so that we go down, when we click on the override instance data, we can see that we have access to the origin and the actor. And this is the location that we somehow need to change so that the door remains, the actor remains in its correct location and just animates the rotation instead of snapping to 000, which is the original location of the transform. So how do we go about doing that? Now this is a lot more complicated. 
Let's just undo that. Save this, close it, go back here. So before we do the binding, we just move all this across. When we get the level sequence player, we need to say set override instance data to true. We now need to get the instance data, get instance, get default instance data. We have to cast this to default default level sequence instance data. Move all that across. When we have access to the default level instance data, here we can say set transform origin. So this will change the origin of the sequence its location and we set that to the location of the door that we want to open so we can say get get actor transform we can set that there and then we can connect everything and we can see So now if everything has gone correctly, both of these doors should animate. Let's play. So we go to our original door, it animates correctly in the correct location. We go to our duplicate door, again it animates correctly in the correct location. We could create a, another door. With another button. We could rotate the door. Now if we go to this door, oh, we so we need to just set the which door to open BBP door let me click BP door three. And we go to the second door, it opens, and we go to our third door, it opens correctly as well. So that's how you can reuse the same level sequence animation on multiple different actors without having to duplicate that. And the key, so the two main things to remember is that one, on the original sequence, make sure that actor is at zero, zero, zero. Otherwise, the location that you transform it to will need to be adapted for any change. And secondly, from the level sequence, you need to override the instance data. You need to get the instance data, the default instance data, cast it to this default level sequence instance data, and from there, set the new transform origin to to the new actor or door. Then from the from the sequence actor, you can add a binding which allows you to replace the original binding using the get sequence binding node to this for door to the door that we are linked to. And then just play.